So maybe you're doing things manually with your network. Maybe you're doing all those configurations by hand and so forth, but what if you wanted to get started with network automation? Joining us today is Adrian, who's an outright expert. He's a CCIE, which is a Cisco certified internetworking expert. Adrian, tell us the why, the what, the how. If I'm new to networking, where do I even start? Mel, Denise, first of all, thank you so much for having me as part of your stand-up. Uh, I'm glad to be here, hey, everyone. So I'm happy to talk about you know network automation, which is a subject that's close to my heart. Um, and first of all, let's start with what, right? We're talking about automation and all of that. So what should folks focus on when we're talking about automation? In my mind, there's three main buckets or maybe three main topics when we're talking about automation and programmability. There's the configurations that you have in your network, right? Day-to-day, -day, uh, your moves, ads, changes, uh, you're deploying a new site or you're upgrading software. So it's just, you know, day-to-day -day work configuration changes that you do. So that's one aspect that you should definitely think about automating. Look at what you do day in and day out as part of your job as a network engineer, a uh, DevOps engineer. Then the second bucket would be the integrations that you have as part of your infrastructure, right? So I'm talking about your integration with ServiceNow. It could be, or, you know, third-party tools that are using APIs. You have notifications that you're sending to WebEx Teams or a Slack room or Microsoft Teams or, you know, whatever it is, right? So you have these integrations with third-party tools with other software from your infrastructure. That would be the second uh, option that's, you know, up for automation, for improving, making sure your workflows are more streamlined and, and better. And then the third bucket for automation would be in my mind is monitoring and getting operational data from the infrastructure, right? So is how do you get all that operational data from all your infrastructure, make sure you get it as real time as as you can and display it in a way that it makes sense for your knock engineers right for your operations people making sure that you keep everything running and making sure that you know at any point what's happening in real time like i said throughout your network so three main buckets right your changes your your just your configuration your cli old school your integrations third-party integrations with other tools, making sure your workflows are improved, and then monitoring, getting that operational data um, and building maybe dashboards or uh, integrating it with monitoring tools. So, you know, that's kind of what you could start automating and looking at, in, at least in my mind. Um, and then how you approach it, it's, it's really up to your own environment, right? We see people... Um, developing tools by themselves, right? We see people using you know, Ansible, Terraform, especially once you kind of get started, you would look at a, at a tool like Ansible, for example, to help you out because it comes kind of prepackaged with all the modules, right? The, the, all, all the heavy lifting of mapping uh, CLI commands to YAML files, to making it you know, scalable to a certain extent does that all uh, all the heavy lifting for you so it's easier to get started with it same thing with terraform right if there's a provider for terraform for uh, our products then definitely have a look at that and once you get more advanced and you know you look for larger skills um, you can look at something like nornir or developing your own frameworks and your own solutions either on top of python or um whatever you're you're comfortable with whatever programming language you're comfortable with um so i mean you could get started simply by just you know choosing one simple task that you're doing currently in your job and see how you can use uh, one of these tools that i mentioned to kind of automate that at a, at a small scale at the beginning do it on a couple of devices, then try to scale that up and, you know, get started that way. Um, and I mean, I'm sure you will see the advantages right away. 
it might take a bit of time at the beginning to you know set up everything but once you have it set up keep them keep in mind that once you have your you know, automation script tool set up you can then reuse it many many times in the future so even if you at the beginning it takes you a bit longer it's fine because in the long term you will save a lot of time uh you know by by using automation you know you talked about the three buckets you talked about how that you can do it but i'm sure that there's a lot of people out there and i've heard like you know i'm already good with my day-to-day -day life i i'm i know what i'm supposed to do i get my tasks done why should I even automate? Like, like you said, sometimes it takes a little while to get started. Like, why should somebody automate? You know, first of all, it's it's helping you be quicker at, at what you do. There's one way of, you know, configuring, let's say, 50 devices. Let's start small, right? If you go one by one uh, to configure a feature, enable or configure a new VLAN, right? Um, on your infrastructure there's it's just the the time aspect of it is right the, the amount of time that you save by automating or using tools to help you do it in a in a faster way uh then there's the uh, you know catching errors faster right you can fat finger you go device by device you you could forget something uh so there's there's the error uh part of it that you're trying to minimize the errors that you do with with automation um, there's the way of you know having the option of kind of reverting back quickly if something happens right so you have automation enabled then you quickly can turn back and reconfigure to a previous version remove the config that you know broke something much faster um, then if you would have to go, say, okay, what happened? Which device do I need to go and remove this configuration? If you have it all set, it, it's much faster. So it's uptime, right? That affects your uptime of your infrastructure. Um, you get better uptime, you do your job faster and better. Um, so those are you know, some of the advantages that we see with automation, um, for sure. I have another question. Um, so you were talking about that, that first, that you know, when we went back to those three fundamentals uh, earlier, uh, with that first one, <clears throat> if I needed to choose between writing something, say in Python, or using some of the con you know configuration management tools, what would you recommend? Start with Python, or start with the recommendation, uh, or I'm sorry, with, with the configuration management tools, or would you somehow try to learn both? I mean, I, I mentioned it a bit. Right, but I think to get started would be use the configuration management tool to get started because all the, like I was calling it the heavy lifting, right, of mapping the modules with the CLI commands or with the REST API endpoints, that's already done for you, right? If you use a tool like Ansible, like I was saying, right? So that's just building your playbook, right? Creating your YAML files, adding your credentials in a host config, uh, so there's a lot of help that you get by using a configuration management tool. Uh, but once, you know, they have their limitations, of course, right? They only go to a certain, they don't support all devices from everyone. So if you don't have a module in Ansible that's supporting your, uh, your infrastructure or your device, then, you know, you're out of luck. You either develop your own module, which is going to be in Python, or you write your own application, which could be whatever programming language you're you're comfortable with. Um, so yeah, start with a tool. I, my suggestion would be, and then take it from there. Once you start hitting the limitation, because you will hit limitations with these tools, right? Be it skill, being the lack of support for a certain feature or a certain device that you have. But once you get to that level, then you'll see that like, oh, so you see the limitations and then you'll see like, wait, what do I need to do next? And it's usually at that point where you have to do and uh, build custom, kind of do it your own or see, you know, what the community has done because we do have code exchange. We do have a, a whole community of people that are building tools, are building, um, you know, automation around the networks. 
So definitely have a look also at our code exchange and the code that is in there. We have you know, thousands of repos. Um, the important thing is that you're not alone in this journey, right? We all, we're all in it. So we're all trying to make our jobs easier, automate. Um, and the nice thing with the community is that, you know, we share with each other what we've done. All the projects that I've worked at Cisco for the past eight years, you know, they're on GitHub. You can see them. They're on Code Exchange. You can have a look at them and, you know, Git clone, modify it for your own infrastructure and, and go from there. So, um, yeah, I would suggest going back to your question and we'll wrap up this. Start with the tool. And then once you see if, if it works for you, the tool, right? Perfect. Stick with it. But in most cases, you will see that there is some limitations with all of them. And then when you start tinkering and kind of either build your own modules or kind of build your own tools. Great. That's that's a that's an excellent way to start. Are there any other resources? You mentioned Code Exchange. Any other resources out there to help someone get started for the very first time with automation? Yeah, I mean, we have a whole sleuth of uh, resources on, on developer.cisco.com. Right. So if you're new to this or you haven't heard of it, uh, I would definitely suggest check, uh, check the resources we have there. We have learning labs, right? Developer.cisco.com slash learning. Uh, there's lots and lots of learning labs over there, which are, you know, 15, 20, 30 minute bite size content, step by step, do this, do this. This is the, how you authenticate. This is the piece of code or, you know, Ansible. This is how you install it. This is how you use it. It's all explained step by step in there. Oh yes, Devon Express. What used to be Devon Express, now it's DevNet Test Drive. We we rebranded it. So if you're not familiar with Devon Express, uh, these are in-person events, right? Uh, check developer.cisco.com slash events for all the test drives coming to a city either near you or a city that you live in. <laughs> No, that was a lot of awesome information, um, especially for somebody who's trying to get started. Like I said, I've heard it from many people. They're like, I am a network engineer. How do I get started? And um, it's been great to have you here, Adrian. And to, you know, you have lots of resources for everybody and for everyone. If you do have additional questions, you know, drop the question in the comments and Adrian can definitely help answer those. Sweet. Thanks. Thanks, Melanie. Denise, thanks for having me. Mm -hmm.